I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about Flexbox, JavaScript charts, syntax highlighting, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this really great article called Using Flexbox Today. I guess you could also use it tomorrow as well, but you can use it today too. Uh, so I, was put, I was putting it off till tomorrow. Well, today... I was reading this, this article on procrastination. I was like, eh, I'll try, I'll try other things later, you know? So if you haven't heard, Flexbox is a new way to lay out web pages. And instead of using floats or inlines or clear fixes or display table and all the other sorts of stuff that you might have used for positioning and layout in the past, you can use Flexbox. Now, it's a little bit difficult to grasp, and that's exactly the crux of this article. It says that a lot of online tutorials will use abstract examples to explain Flexbox. Well, actually, there's a lot of practical uses for this. So, for example, it makes card layouts a lot easier. This is a pretty popular design pattern. And in fact, this is something that we use on Treehouse. That's pretty cool. There's also split screen layouts that it makes really easy, much easier than it would have been in the past, or I guess just yesterday, since this is Flexbox today. Yesterday is tomorrow. Tomorrow's today is, is tomorrow? Yesterday? I guess we're supposed to use Flexbox at all those points. Yes. Actually, Flexbox does have pretty great browser support. So it's compatible with pretty much any version of Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari. The only place you're going to have a little bit of trouble is in Internet Explorer. Hmm. IE 9 and back doesn't support it at all. IE 10 has the older 2012 syntax. And IE 11 supports it, well, today. Uh, but there's a couple of things that you can do to make it work. You can have a couple of fallbacks. You can also do feature detection if you want to start using it right now. I and guess you could say your options are flexible. They are flexible. You, you, can, you don't have to think inside the box. Next up, we have a library called Tau Charts. This is JavaScript charting uh, built on top of d3.js. And the focus of this library, if you had to guess, is on design and flexibility. So that's all well and good, but let's see some examples because that is what is really interesting. So here we have just a couple of charts, and the code to make this is really, really easy. So you can see as we kind of hover over the different items on the side, they get highlighted in the charts themselves. And then there's even little drop downs here to change the different trend lines from linear to exponential and a couple other options. Now you might be thinking that a lot of code is required to get that working, but no, not really much code at all. You just give it the chart, you, ex uh, you initialize the chart here, give it some data, dimensions, and different types, as well as plugins if you want to. There's uh, options for tooltips, legends, and kind of different things that you would think would be in a charting library. Now, there are some great examples here on the site, and you can see that it really does not take a ton of code to get this working. Um, here we go. Here's, a, here's another example down here. And this is actually very performant, even with a ton of different data. Now, there's a very thorough documentation here. It walks you through all of the basic concepts and even has examples right inside. Now, this is built on top of d3.js, so you will need that as a dependency. It just kind of makes these things a little bit easier to use. So if you are interested and in need of a charting library, make sure to check this out. You can find a link in the show notes right below this video. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is yet another chart. We have some, we have some good segues today. Flexibility to charting. Uh, and this is a cool chart for CSS rulers. And this can be a little bit of a complex thing to understand when you're dealing with different CSS units. Are they relative to the font? Are they relative to the viewport? Or are they absolute? Or in other words, a physical measurement? Only Siths deal in absolutes, and, and also CSS. And, and also several CSS units deal yeah. in, in absolutes, relatively speaking. 
so there's these first few, which are colored green, and that is relative to the font size. So M's, EX, and a few others here, REMs, are relative to the font size, so that's good to know. Then there's also a few that are relative to the viewport, which can be pretty handy to use in certain situations. And then there are absolute measurements or physical measurements. These don't see quite as much use with the advent of responsive web design, but they're still pretty useful in certain situations. Maybe print style sheets? Exactly. So here we have a couple of different toggles where we can adjust the font size of the HTML, the body, or the example here. And you can see how these different units respond. So for example, this is like one inch here, or these are relative to the font, these are relative to the viewport. And so when you change these, they're all gonna react differently. So if I increase the font size here, those will change, or if I change the width of the example, so you actually change the whole unit there, you can see how that behaves. Anyway, this is just a really handy chart if you're trying to figure out some CSS units and you're having trouble debugging it, you can see exactly how they should be behaving under ideal conditions. Yeah, I guess you could say that that, that is off the charts. You could say that. Next up, we have a project called Highlight.js. This is a small JavaScript library that gives you syntax highlighting for your web pages. It supports a ton of different languages, 112 of them to be exact, and it has 49 different styles or themes. And you can see I'm, I'm clicking through here and the language is changing and also the theme is changing as well. Now this is gonna be really useful if you are trying to show code on your web page. Now, what's really nice about this library compared to some other ones is it doesn't take a lot to get going. You just throw in a link to the style sheet and the script. And then if you want to, all you need to do is call this line right here, init highlighting on load. Then you surround your code with a pre-tag and then a code, and then you give it the class of the language that you wanna use. So the really nice thing about this is that you can do custom initialization. So instead of saying, hey, I want all of my pre and code tags to have the syntax highlighting, you can change that to divs uh, with different classes. And there is a lot of documentation that lets you really get into the nitty gritty of when you are doing this highlighting. One thing that's really nice is that depending on the language, you can also change uh, spaces to tabs and a ton of different things right there. Let me see if I can find it right here. Um, but yeah, I cannot find it. That's the problem with doing a live show. It also does support line numbers and yeah, just a bunch of various options. Anyway, once again, if you need to add syntax highlighting to your web page, check this out. We'll have a link in the show notes. Thanks for highlighting that, Jason. Next up is a really cool tool called Shade. This is a mathematically derived gradient explorer. What, does that, what the heck does that mean? I have well, no idea. Basically, it can be a little bit difficult to understand what kind of gradient you're gonna get when you just type in code into CSS. You have to type it in, go back, refresh in the browser, you find out that's not what you wanted, and then you have to do that cycle over and over again. Well, this is much better because you can just use these sliders here and you can change the hue of the gradient. And look at that, they even changed the color of the font so you can still see it, that's pretty clever. And then you can change maybe the saturation so you can go from like grayscale to color. And you can change the lightness. And then you can also change the hue shift here. You can Ooh. change the saturation of that and the lightness as well. So there's a couple different adjustments there that are actually maybe a little bit more similar to what you might expect in Photoshop in terms of these little sliders here. And then right there, it gives you the code to actually put this into your web page. So if you create a gradient and you end up liking it, you can go ahead and just copy and paste that right into your site. You can also, of course, put in a base color here if you have a specific color you want to start out with, and then you can 
adjust from there. Anyway, not a whole lot to say about that, but I thought this was a pretty cool tool. Yeah, that's delightful. Anyway, that's all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes right below the video. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next week.